Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca, if we have never met before, and this is my channel where we talk about all the houseplant things. If this is our first time meeting, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Usually a lot of people find my channel through these houseplant tour videos, so why don't you stick around if you like this video, if you like my collection, if you're interested in learning more about how I'm taking care of all of these plants. I post videos usually two to three times a week, but today, like I said, we're going to be doing a houseplant tour where I show you every single plant in my collection, where it's located, how I'm decorating with that plant. It was really important to me actually to have good windows in my home. We did buy this home, we live in Missouri. So the weather really is super awesome for a lot of this stuff. It's very humid in the summer. So my plants are thriving to say the least. But prior to this, I lived in Arizona where it was very dry. I had good windows in that apartment though, and so it was a really great setup there too. So if you wanna look at past houseplant tours, I'll have them linked down below so you can see them. But this one, I have this room that I'm currently standing in, which is a indoor sunroom. And basically there's no air conditioning or heating that comes into this room. So in the dead of winter, it's a bit difficult. I did have to bring in a small greenhouse heater, but other than that, like things stayed in here the whole year and we were totally fine. We do have some Western exposure in here, but it is primarily Southern exposure. And then we also have two skylights um, on top of the roof, obviously. So that's the lighting situation in here. Without further ado, let's get into the video. going to start off with the sunroom which holds a majority of my plants mostly on this wall here and you can see the skylights just really lend a lot of bright light for this room the plants are thriving to say the least so we're gonna start over here i'm also going to share a little bit about the furniture in this room because i usually get a lot of questions about my rattan and wicker pieces so first of all this stand right here i purchased from wicker goddess in phoenix she actually has an in-person store now and i think maybe online sales anyway she found this and i thought it was perfect for plants and little storage for the longest time i didn't know what to put at the bottom because i couldn't really put plants there so i just decided to start storing some extra pots and plant things down there and it worked out pretty nicely and then on top i have all of my unique monsteras let's say this is one of my alba monsteras i have two of them and this is one that i purchased from a plant seller who was less than ideal for most people so just out of that i don't share who it was also, I'm pretty sure that their shop was shut down, so it wouldn't matter anyway, so don't worry. I'm not trying to hoard information from you guys. If it was a good seller, I would tell you, but a lot of people had pretty horrible experiences with him, and I just happened to get lucky. So as you can see, it is quite large, and it is putting out a lot of new growth pretty rapidly um, and a lot of the growth is looking really really nice you can see that it has a really gorgeous modeling in the variegation so when you are looking for one of these you want to find one that has something like this with the variegation usually you'd have to worry more about reversion with this plant when you are getting big segments of white or big segments of green i happen to have one that has really lovely modeling and i'm so happy about it the stem is super variegated as well, and I'm actually going to be chopping it soon to give to a friend, probably about right here. So I'm excited to see what it'll do branching wise, but we do have a lot of the older original leaves that the plant came with, um, and they look pretty good too. They haven't gotten super big, but we do have a few with fenestration, so that makes it pretty fun. This big leaf right here, I propagated and basically it was not a top cutting, so it took a long time to put out something else. And so it has since put out three leaves. This one came out first and then it put out this one and then it put out this one. And as you can see, there is some cosmetic damage on these leaves and that is mostly just due to the fact that I moved um, and the leaves Got a bit damaged in the move. I moved across the country, so it was kind of expected. But yeah, it hasn't put out a new leaf in a long time. 
I'm thinking I'm going to repot it to help it give it a little bit of a boost because the soil is pretty old. And then the last of my variegated monsteras is this Thai constellation. This one also has a little bit of damage from the move, but this side of the leaf was actually inside of the leaf, like in the roll when we were moving. So that side stayed protected. But yeah, it's been a pretty steady plant for me. I've never had any significant issues with it no rotting or anything like that. I do have it in a pretty chunky mix. This is my De La Tanks soil mix. It's a custom soil blend that I created with a soil company in Tucson, Arizona, and she is pregnant. So she's on a little pole. I do think that I will eventually remove it from the pole and give it something else. It'll be the same with this elbow, but for now, they're pretty happy just to be hanging out right there. Now up here we have a couple anthurium. So this one is an anthurium balloenum and it's really, really beautiful because it has these gorgeous big leaves. Let me show you this one. This is a pretty classic balloenum leaf and I just think that it is the most beautiful plant. It's not one that I would have thought to pick up, but I actually won this in a giveaway and it has been an extremely prolific and happy grower with me. It's actually putting out a new leaf very quickly after it put out this one. Like this one is just barely hardened off, as you can see. So she's looking really nice. I'm super excited to see how big that leaf will be. But for a while, it would put out a leaf and then kill off a leaf but it stopped doing that recently. So I think that it's a lot happier. Now this is a King Anthurium or the Anthurium vichii, and it is well known for its ripply leaves. Now he happens to be really thirsty right now, so you can see that he's leaning. Typically he'll be more up like this. So that's just a little tip. If you see yours leaning a little bit, that means that it's thirsty. Also the leaves will feel a lot thinner, but in general, it's been a really great plant. It hasn't been a super fast grower for me, but in any case, it's been a steady plant to have around. Like I don't really ever have to worry about it. If you are wanting to get started with Anthurium, I would suggest starting with this one because it's a very, very simple care plant. It has very simple needs, very similar to a Monstera Deliciosa. And then up high up here, I have a Begonia Maculata. I kind of didn't know what to do with it, so I just stuck it up here. And just in case you guys are curious, all of these plants are hung up with plant hooks. And I've showed several times in videos hanging those up, but they just make the plant look like it's floating and it's a really cool effect. Here's what an empty one looks like. And then I have a couple of plants over here that are hung up with them too. This plant shelf is probably one of my most prized possessions. <laughs> it is so beautiful. I got it for $35 off of Facebook Marketplace. It was a crazy find, and I think that they were selling it so cheap because it was a little bit broken. You can see there's a little bit of damage there, but you can't see that at all because I have it covered with a chair, and even when you could see it, it wasn't a big deal. I have a lot of smaller plants on this shelf because I think that it's just a great place to put a bunch of smaller plants without it looking too crowded and overwhelming. So let's start up here. This is a lemon lime Maranta, and it's one of the more beautiful Marantas in my opinion. There is also the red one, but I really like this one. I think that it is so beautiful. The, these colors are just so lovely. And when it got shipped to me from Tennessee Tropicals, it wasn't too happy about it. You know, there's some residual signs of that, but we do have lots of new growth coming in finally, and it's starting to fill in pretty nicely. This is a watermelon peperomia. It's in one of my favorite pots. I'll put the name on the screen where this is from. And watermelon peperomia are just such beautiful, fun little peperomias. When they're thirsty, they get a little soft. You can see I can bend this, so that means that it's thirsty. I did water it right before I filmed. <laughs> but she is typically a little bit more upright as well. But they do droop ever so slightly when they're thirsty. This wonky looking plant is a baby Monstera Deliciosa that I started from seed. I shared that entire process on my channel if you'd like to go watch that video, but it was a really fun way to, I don't know, interact with this plant and learn how it works. I would like to get it in a place where it's getting slightly more light because as you can see, it does look like it's reaching a bit, but it was really easy to start from seed. So if you are looking into doing that, I will have the information down below about where I got my seeds. I'm blanking on the name of this Syngonium, but it's a really, really delicate, gorgeous Syngonium, and it just puts out these 
cute little green leaves with this silver in the middle. And these leaves are very, very thin in comparison to other Syngonium. I have another Syngonium right here that I'll talk about in a little bit. And the leaves just feel a lot more papery on this one, which means that it needs a bit more on the care side, a little bit more watering. Um, so anyway, it is really sweet. I got this from a local nursery here in Colombia, and I quite enjoy it. This is a philodendron adabapoense, and I actually ordered one of these from Green Spaces ID, uh, I don't know, a couple years ago, and then I gave it to my friend Adam, and then it got big enough to take a cutting, and he gave me this cutting, and I'm really excited and so happy to have it. Finally, after a very long time of having it, it's putting out a new leaf, and something really unique about these is they have a purple back on the leaves. This green is just like basically one of my favorite colors. I love the silvery green color and it's potted in De La Tanks. Most of my plants are potted in De La Tanks, so <laughs> it's an all-purpose houseplant soil, so you can pretty much assume that anything in my house could be planted in De La Tanks. This is the Tradescantia Nanook. Uh, there's lots of different types of Tradescantia out there. This is my favorite. It's pink and green and lovely, and a lot of people ask me what I'm gonna do when it gets a little bit bigger and is less cute because they do have a tendency to get leggy at the top here. And what I'll probably do is take cuttings and pot them back up here so that the top can always be full. I kind of already did that on accident with this piece. I broke off this piece and I just stuck it back in the soil. I didn't even propagate it first. I just stuck it in the soil and it rooted really nicely. That's probably the first time that's ever happened to me though. So I wouldn't suggest that as like something to do all the time. But if you feel confident to try it out and it doesn't mean that much to you if it doesn't make it, definitely try it. <laughs> This is a philodendron gloriosum, and it's very little, but she's making some progress. So this is a newer leaf right here, and then we have a new leaf coming in right there. So half of this plant was actually gifted to me by Planting the World Red. We did a swap together, and then the other half I purchased from Tennessee Tropicals. So I kind of combined the two of them, and I actually don't even know which is which anymore because they've just sort of melded together. But this is a creeping plant, so it doesn't like to climb, it likes to creep. And you can kind of see down in here, it's just sort of starting to creep across the bottom. I am excited to see what this will become, but right now it is just a very small and tiny cute plant. This is a philodendron florida. This is a more juvenile leaf that it started when I broke off the growth tip, which, surprise, surprise, I broke it off again. So it's having to start over. Pretty unfortunate, but you can see this little thing right here. That's a new growth tip that it's starting. There was a new leaf coming out right here, and then I knocked it somehow and it fell off. But this is what the leaves look like when they're a little bit more mature. So they're very cute, fun little shapes. This is a little like between mature and immature leaf. <laughs> kind of hidden back here, I have a string of hearts which dangles down. It is in recovery. It wasn't very happy with me for a very long time, but I just sort of started ignoring it. And it's much happier now. So I don't know, it's one of those unremarkable plants that just kind of like sits here and I don't really pay attention to it, but it's very pretty even so. And this pot is from a local nursery in Tucson. Unfortunately, I can't link it or anything. I always get questions, but yeah, it's super pretty. This Monstera adansonii was also in a swap that I did with Planting the World Red. And it was actually the Monstera adansonii that changed my mind about them. <laughs> so I was very burned by them at first. I had a couple bad experiences and I thought that I was done. And then she sent me this and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna try again. And it hasn't been a super fast growing plant by any means, but it is like a really cool wide form version. So it has like really pretty um, fenestrations. So I do quite enjoy it. And then last plant on the shelf is an alocasia stingray. This is the definition of a plant that I don't pay attention to. Honestly, I forget that I have it a lot of the time because it just kind of lives its life and it is putting out a new leaf back there if you can see that. So it's just a little leaf spike. This one does the thing where it'll put out a new leaf and then drop an old one, but I don't see that happening with this one. I think that I've been paying more attention to it, so that's probably not going to happen this time. Okay, moving on to the wall. This right here is one of my favorite plants. This is an Alvo Syngonium, and 
as you can see, it has a lot of really beautiful variegation and we do have some new growth in here, which is so pretty, but this is just a classic example of what the leaves could look like, just everything on the screen right now. So we have more dark variegation, which is little models. We have a fully modeled leaf. We have a pure white leaf. We have a white leaf with a little bit of modeling, you know, so you can see just like a nice little cross section. We have a full green leaf. Um, you can just see a nice little cross section of all the different types of leaves and variegation that comes out on this one. You really never know what you're going to get and I think that's what makes it so exciting. And I've had this plant for a couple of years and it's been super steady for me. It has overcome spider mites close to three or four times. And yeah, I mean, you can see it's a little bit thinned out from that type of stuff happening, but it is still pretty strong and I love it. It is actually held up by plant stakes. So it would not normally stand up on its own like this. I definitely have it tied up <laughs> to keep it so that it has this beautiful shape, which is an okay thing to do. I have lots of examples of this type of stuff around my house and whatever helps the plant look good because this is a plant that could trail down like a pothos or something like that, but I think it looks best when it is upright. So whatever I can do to help it look like this, I'm gonna do. This is a Hoya Callistophylla and it's a very special Hoya because it has really, really beautiful coloring and I just think that it's so unique. This is the newest leaf that it's put out, which is really cute, but it has in the past put out a really long leaf like this that was a little bit more like a sword. So that's a really great Hoya. I think that Tennessee Tropical still sells them and when I originally bought it, it was like $70 and I think now it's probably closer to 100. This little philodendron Brazil situation was one of my first plants that I ever grew from a cutting. It's still extremely small. I started it in 2018 as a cutting and you know, nothing has really happened, but it's stable and it is putting out a new leaf actually, surprisingly enough. But for the better part of that time, it's just kind of looked exactly like this. And that doesn't really bother me. I think that it's pretty nonetheless. And then we have the plant that I'm sure everybody is curious about if you're new here and this is your first time seeing it. We probably made your eyes get a little bit bigger, but this is a Monstera adansonii. I get comments here and there saying that it's a different type of Monstera, and I just tend to disagree. I think that it's an adansonii in a very, very mature form. Like this leaf is breathtaking, but I just don't think that it's anything beyond you know, a basic plant that is extremely mature and has been given conditions to live that are similar to what it would find in nature. What I mean by that is if you can see kind of through all of this, <laughs> there is a wood stake that is going through it all. It's a big wood pole. You can see it much better down here where it's a bit more sparse. And you can just see all of these roots that have attached themselves to it. And it's just a piece of wood, that's it. And so over time, it's had the ability to climb, which gave it the leverage to build these really, really big, beautiful leaves that are, most of them, a lot of the really big ones, like this one in particular, is probably about 12 inches long. So really, really beautiful plant. And I got this from a local nursery. It was about $200, $40 for delivery, all things considered. So I think it was a really great price. Also, it has bloomed a couple of times. We have a bloom there, a bloom here, a bloom here. So she's just really happy living her best life. And honestly, she's long past outgrown her pole. The pole stopped probably about like right here. And so this is just like bulk. Like this is just like coming back down. <laughs> so it's very big and I've considered extending the pole, but I'm just gonna leave it as it is and let it cascade back down because it's a little bit too tall as it is already. It's definitely taller than all of my doors. So it's kind of difficult to navigate around when I need to water it and stuff. And then here's a quick little moment for this begonia. This is a begonia lucerna. And I sometimes will keep a plant on this table. Usually I'm using it to like repot and work on. I'll put down a surface so I don't scratch the glass. But normally I just like switch out a plant here and there. But currently it is this cutie little begonia and it's sitting in a thrifted basket. I have two Hoyas here right next to the south window and they're loving it. This is a Hoya linearis, one of my favorite plants because it is so soft. If you ever have the opportunity to touch a Hoya linearis, I implore you to do so because they're very, very soft and fuzzy 
it's very satisfying and when they put out new leaves or new branches and everything it kind of looks like the plant is having a bad hair day because they just kind of stick straight up so these ones are growing out to be a bit longer so they're going to start laying down like the rest of them but it was really cute when they were first coming out because they were kind of sticking straight up everywhere i got this from plant arena probably in 20 early 2020 when she first started selling them by the way this is my very very lovely hoya compacta variegata and i got this in california a couple years ago in 2019 and it has since been one of those plants that just kind of grew and i wasn't really thinking about it or paying attention so honestly these plants will sometimes go through phases where they just don't grow and it's pretty frustrating and then you kind of stop paying attention to it for a while and then all of a sudden boom you have a ton of growth <laughs> which is pretty cool you can see we've got some active growth points at the end there and also on the end here but most excitingly we have an active peduncle which means that it's going to bloom when these bloom it's basically a big pink sphere and they smell like tootsie rolls <laughs> once the bloom has run its course it'll all the little blooms will fall off and then it'll start doing another one so this is like a rebloom of a bloom that i had a couple weeks ago so don't cut these off once they're done blooming because they will continue to you know put out more flowers this is a silver bay aglionema chinese evergreen and it's just one of those plants that i am in love with you know i always want to have one of these in my house because they're so pretty so striking in a corner and most of all they're extremely easy to care for this one has a lot of new growth on it right now like it's just been really going to work so i'm really excited about that and it's been blooming too let me see if i can find the blooms there they are <laughs> can you see airway blooms are typically not very pretty but it is still fun to see your plant bloom and then we have my favorite plant the phytonia i know that a lot of people have complicated relationships with phytonia but it is my favorite plant so i vow to always have one even if i accidentally kill one i have to replace it but i just love this particular type i don't really like the other types where the you know the streaks are a bit thicker or darker or the plant is pink or something or you know, I just, I like this specific type of Fetonia and it's currently sitting in a little shallow pot that is too small for it. So I need to find a bigger shallow pot for it, but I have it right next to the south window and I hope that that keeps it short and bushy because these have a tendency to get leggy and stringy if they're not getting enough light. So they can actually handle quite a bit of light, typically a ground cover plant. So it kind of just like shingles itself along the ground. So you can kind of imagine that it's very, very beautiful. And then another plant that's quite special to me is this Gapertia zebrina. And I actually purchased this from a local nursery here in Columbia called Vintage Hill. They carry my soil. If you're ever intrigued by, you know, Vintage Hill, you want to go check them out. But this plant is one of those that I purchased kind of thinking, well, okay, it was kind of like a siren call, right? Like I knew that I shouldn't be buying it because I've never had one. I've never had a Calathea. I've never, well, okay, first of all, this used to be a Calathea. I called it a Gapertia because it was reclassified, just so everybody knows. So if you've heard it under like Calathea zebrina, we're talking about the same plant here. But anyway, point is, I didn't think that I should buy it because, you know, they seem to be really hard to care for. But the plants that have been reclassified to Gapertia from Calathea seem to be the ones that are a bit easier to care for. So I would say if you're up for the challenge, definitely pick one of these up because they're incredibly soft. One of the softest houseplants I've ever felt. It's so, so velvety. And the pot that it's in, I actually was gifted from a friend, Mariah. I think that she found it at World Market, I think. But I haven't potted the plant in it yet because I'm just waiting on a modified soil mixture. And yeah, it has a little saucer. I don't know, it's just a really cute stand, so I thought I'd give the little plant stand a shout out. It's grown so much and these leaves are getting so much bigger. Like, look at the difference between like, this super new leaf and you know the leaves that it had that it had when i first got it you know there's a big difference in size between those two leaves so it is very happy and i'm so thankful for that now over here in this little corner i have a shoe rack but on top of that i have some plants so i have to admit i don't love the way that this looks it looks very cluttered i would prefer to have like two or three plants on this but there aren't a ton of spaces for me to put plants, you know, so I'm still trying to figure out where I can distribute them so it doesn't just look like a storage, 
shelf like this. I think this is a very storage shelf-esque. Oh, I just realized I'm not wearing my ring. Aw, <laughs> darn it. Anyway, um, this is a Syndapsis Pictus Exotica, one of my first house plants. I actually started this from four individual leaves. So it is recently putting out some new leaves after so long of doing nothing. I think that is thanks to some fertilizer. I did the Tanks Organic Supermix fertilizer and a lot of my plants are putting out growth who haven't in a very long time. So also this circle trellis that it's sitting on is from Plants and Pups, I believe. I will have this name on the screen and I'll also link it down below if you're interested. These leaves are so beautiful. It's such a timeless plant and I wish that I could get one that was really, really big and like trailing down so that I could put it up on my balcony area that you'll see in a second, but I have not had the luck to find like a really, really big one. Kind of tucked back here, I have this Dracaena Moonshine, previously Sansevieria Moonshine. So I am gonna be saying Dracaena because that's what it is reclassified to, but Sansevieria, you know, feels a little bit more natural, but that's not what it's called anymore. So it is a snake plant and it's one that has really beautiful, like light green coloring here. And as the leaves mature, they obviously do turn a darker green color, which is kind of hard to see with this window backlighting everything, but you can see it is a bit darker than these baby leaves. Behind that, I have a whale fin, which has four fins on it right now. We had a new one come out. Oh man, we're struggling with the backlight. <laughs> it's one of those plants that you forget needs to be dusted, but they definitely can to grab onto that dust and that keeps them from photosynthesizing. So I'm probably gonna come around and clean these off because look, dust. This plant is a Cissus quadrangularis. It is a jungle cacti of sorts. So it's pretty cool there. It's looking like pretty rough. Oh wait, actually this isn't even attached to anything. This happens, okay? It's kind of a delicate plant and these things will pop off all the time and I'll just like bury it back in the soil and just like hope that it roots. I've done that a few times and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but in general, it's just a little jungle cacti. I don't really pay much attention to it. I could actually probably put it outside and it would be pretty happy, um, especially with like all the humidity and everything. I might do that actually, just to get it off of this area right here for the time being, but I need to repot it as well. So she needs some work. This is the area that needs some work, you know? <laughs> and then this is a Sansevieria Bantle Sensation, or sorry, a Dracaena Bantle Sensation, pretty much known for it's striking yellow leaves and variegation and everything else. It wasn't until recently that it started putting out leaves like this. For a long time, it was doing this, which is still cool, but a little bit less exciting than something like this. So really, really pretty Bantle sensation. I do need to repot it as well. This shelf I actually put up today for this video because it was sitting on the ground for so long and I was thinking to myself, you know what? I want that to be up. So I finally put it up. It's a little shelf that I got from Target from the Magnolia collection probably two years ago now. So I don't know if they would still sell it. If they did, I would probably buy another one because I do quite like the way that it looks up here. I would probably buy another one and put it like right there. But anyway, down here, I have a watermelon Dachidia, which has done pretty much nothing since I've had it, but it, honestly, it doesn't bother me because like the pot is mostly <laughs> what is going on here. Like I like the pot the most, but it is a very beautiful plant. You can see just those leaves. They look like little watermelons and it is a type of Dachidia, which is related to the Hoya. So if you're interested in Hoyas at all, the Dachidia is also really fun and very similar care, but this is actually a mug that somebody sent me and I just spilled. <laughs> somebody uh, drilled a hole at the bottom and sent this to me and it was really, really cool. So I love this pot. This is a Ripsalis Paradoxa, which is one of my favorite jungle cacti. When I purchased this, I got it from eBay and I thought it would be much, much bigger, but this is probably about a three inch pot. <laughs> So it's really tiny, but it has put out some new growth. Recently, you can see this and this, but it's a cool plant because you can see like the shape of these little tendrils. It has like different sides, you know? Like, I don't know, it's just really cool. I quite enjoy looking at it. This is a Christmas cactus or a Thanksgiving cactus. I, you know, I have a hard time remembering which one it is. A Schlumbergera of sorts, if you will. <laughs> and this was a gift from my grandma many years ago, and it has grown a little bit here and there. 
When I was in Tucson, I had it outside most of the time and it grew a lot more there. It recently put out this situation, so that's something new, but you know, typically this is what it looks like. And it bloomed two years ago, but not last year. And then way up here, if you can even hear me anymore, is a Pylaeum peperomioides. And I got this from Green Digs online. And this pot, it came potted with this pot and I just love this pot, it's so pretty. And it actually has two babies growing in, if you can see them. And I'm not going to remove the babies. I want to keep them in the pot so that it can just look really, really full. We're almost done with this room, <laughs> which is the bulk of my plants. So this is a ZZ, just a regular green ZZ, and it's sitting in a plant stand that I got from Joann's years ago. I don't know if they still sell these, but they were having a sale and I picked up two of them. So that's why I have that one. This is also from Green Digs online. It came potted in the same pot as the Pilea. This is a Syndapsis Moonlight, and it's a little bit of a sad plant, but that's okay. <laughs> I think it was too close to the grow light, so it kind of suffered a bit, but in any case, it did recently put out these leaves, so that's something. But anyway, it's in a little pot that I got from the same place as my watermelon peperomia, so that's really fun. Oh, this is definitely grow light burn, because the grow light actually fell on top of the plant, and I didn't notice for a long time. So that's what that is. <laughs> She's been through some stuff, but you know, hopefully she'll like this spot more. I just put her there. Okay, we just saw me repot this massive Monstera the other day, and I brought it inside and look, I was a little bit too late. <laughs> we have lots of birds who live in the tree right above it, so one of them got it, unfortunately. But yeah, it's just uh, two Monsteras combined together. Um, these two are, well, these are two separate plants, but I got them both in the same pot, and then this one was a separate plant that I potted in with these. So this is probably like a 24 to 30 inch pot, I don't actually know, but I need to find a basket to put this in. But I'm gonna have to find like a pretty massive basket to make that work, but this is not gonna be a thing, <laughs> like in my beautiful plant room, no. So I need to figure that out. And it's currently sitting on top of this little plant stand that I got from somebody um, like secondhand in Tucson. That's her, she's really big, completely fills up this area. And I really quite like it. I think that it looks really nice. I used to have them separated and the smaller one lived over here in this corner and it just made it look a little bit too crowded. I like to have the windows exposed. So this is obviously a case where that's not a thing, but I don't like covering the windows with plants. You know what I mean? I like for it to be open for the light to be able to come in. I think that it makes it look a lot less cluttered that way. We have a tiny baby begonia maculata. I got this from Adam a couple years ago and honestly it hasn't done much, but it did put out that, which is cute. So she's just kind of one of those plants that I don't really pay attention to. And then this is also from Adam. This is a, oh, what is this called? A philodendron something. I'm losing the name, but it recently put out this leaf, which is really pretty. And it has like the most gorgeous fuzzy petioles. You can just see how fuzzy that is. It's so cool. I'll have the name on the screen, but I'm completely blanking on what it's called. This is a ghost euphorbia or a dragon bone euphorbia. It has a lot of different names. And I purchased this from a, just a person who had it for a really, really long time. And it is about five feet tall. It's actually, my height, so it might be like five foot five tall at this point, because that's how tall I am. Anyway, it has recently branched out and started doing all of this fun stuff. But yeah, I mean, it's just, there's not much to say about it besides the fact that it's really beautiful. It does need to be repotted very soon, and I have some pieces on the bottom that have fallen off just from moving it around that I need to, you know, give to friends or pot up or something like that. And then up here, that is a bedroom right there. This used to be a balcony, I'm assuming. It looks like there's like a seam right here from where there was a balcony. It was taken down at some point by a previous owner, but they didn't remove this big window. So what we're left with is this fake railing balcony situation. So I decided to put some plants up there. I'm going to put more over on this side too, but I just couldn't reach it from the top there. I'm gonna have to bring in a ladder but I wanted to put some trailing plants on there so that they could trail down and eventually, you know, be this really pretty effect down this wall right here. So first of all, we have a Cebu Blue over there on the end, and then we have a Philodendron Brazil, and then we have a Golden Pothos. <laughs> The 
next room that we're heading into is my office of sorts. Clearly, things are very in progress. <laughs> but I have my plans right here. This is another south window. And this one's gonna be kind of difficult to show, but I'm gonna try my hardest with this backlight situation. I might take some plants off of where they are just so that you can see them better. But I want to first just quickly talk about these ones over here. So <laughs> this is a big macrame hanger that I need to put up still, just in case you were wondering what that is. But this is a Monstera Standeliana. It is a bit dark in here, so hopefully my camera doesn't lose focus a lot. But it's just one of those plants that I, for some reason, am keeping, even though it's very annoying to me. It used to have a really long runner, which I have recently, not recently, actually, like almost a year ago, I cut and I propagated and I got a few pieces that worked, but most of it died. And then it recently put out this shoot, this random shoot at the bottom here. So I don't know what the future of this plant is. I might bring it to a plant swap or it does not spark joy for me. So I need to figure something out for it. But anyway, that's my Monstera Standeliana. This is an orchid, like a random orchid. It's a terrestrial orchid. Actually, a plant friend in Tucson gave this to me, and this is pretty much what it's looked like since I got it. It did recently put out, I think, this piece right here, but it is apparently a pretty sought-after orchid. So anyway, I'm glad that I have one. I just don't really know uh, <laughs> what to do with it. I think that I'm gonna put it outside and see if that does anything for it. We'll just have to see. But it is terrestrial, so it sits in like regular, you know, like cactus soil. And then I have this like shelf that I store my fabric on. This was left by the previous owner of my house and I just used it because I didn't have anything else to put my fabric on for right now. So I will eventually be replacing this. I just don't know with what or when. But yeah, these are my plants. There's two pre-existing hooks that were up here and I just, you know, put some plants on it. And yeah, so let's get started with right here. This is a Mykins, a philodendron Mykins. There is an old dying leaf right here. <laughs> but other than that, it's really happy. It's always put out like, you know, these little pieces down here and looked full up here. It's not like a super crazy, beautiful, unique philodendron Mykins. It just looks, you know, pretty. I think that this is a new leaf. It looks extra glossy. So yeah, it's a beautiful plant and I do love that I have it. It's super low maintenance and it likes this little spot. And this other macrame hanger, I have a little orchid cactus. There is some new growth coming in down there. You can see that small green spike, but it likes this spot as well. I don't know, it's just like a regular old plant. I recently got it from Tennessee Tropicals and there's that. I'm going to turn this one this is a Hoya Wayetii. It did bloom off of this a couple, actually like last year, and it hasn't bloomed since then. It will have bloomed a few times off of this peduncle, but it hasn't bloomed since then. And these leaves are known for being, you know, the long, skinny Hoya leaves. Really pretty, they have the dark margins on the outside. I also have one of these that has like the pink and like the white coloring. But yeah, this is a really steady little Hoya and it's suffered a bit since I moved because I neglected it a little bit and it does need to be repotted. But this is a pot for my friend Joanna. I talk about her a lot. I'll have her linked in the description box because I love her pottery. But anyway, just a nice solid little plant. And then here I have a ponytail palm, which is suffering a bit because these are the plants, like in this room, these plants honestly get a little bit neglected because I forget about them. <laughs> so I either have hardy plants in here or plants just don't make it, you know? So this is a hardy plant, but I do wanna put it outside because I feel like it would be happier out there. Most people in Tucson keep this plant as an outside plant like year round, but um, I happen to have mine inside. I am going to put it outside though. I think it'll be much happier, but I got this from Green Digs and this pot is to die for. It's a nice like blue color. I don't know, I just really love it. I'm gonna move this one so that you can see it better. This is a Hoya Compacta again. This is just a regular green one and I have it on this little trellis. Usually it kind of is up like this. It must have fallen off. It's a cute little plant. I got this in a trade with somebody years and years ago and it's grown pretty steadily and that's really all I have to say about it but this pot is also from my friend Joanna and oh, when they're thirsty, they look like that. 
<laughs> These plant tours always make me realize like my watering schedule is a little all over the place right now, but yeah. She also needs to be repotted. I'd like to get her into some Dela tanks. I feel like that will really launch off some new growth off of this one. This is a little propagation piece of that Standeliana over there. And you can see that it put off a pure white leaf and then a leaf with a little green on it. And it's just been living in this test tube from Concrete Botanical for <laughs> forever. So I don't know, I don't plan on really moving it. It's kind of just a little cute. It would be cute to put on that shelf over there when I style that shelf. So hopefully I will have a use for this, but it is kind of pretty in the test tube. And then the last plant over here is this begonia. I always forget the name, but it has a little bit of a pink tone to it. It's very, very pretty. And it looks really nice on this little trellis that I made a couple years ago. I recently showed this in a video. So if you watch my June favorites, you'll hear more about this plant, but I recently repotted it in some De La Tanks and it's been really, really happy. All right, excuse how dark it is in here. It is full daylight and this is how dark it is in this part of my house, which is why I don't really have plants over here. So this is a rickrack cactus and <laughs> basically lives in total darkness. It really shouldn't be up there. I put it up there temporarily and then I just stayed. And then that is a big, big pothos cutting. You can see how big that leaf is and it's put off this little offshoot. So that just kind of lives up there in water. And then this was a plant shelf. So now it's not going to be a plant shelf. It's going, I'm gonna take down that grow light and I'm going to use this for like things that you would normally put on your kitchen shelves, like glassware and things like that. I really hated having plants here with the grow lights. It just looked horrible to me. I'm not able to have plants in a lot of places in my house, but I would prefer to have no plants and have to have grow lights everywhere. It's just a personal preference for me. We now enter my kitchen, which is another south window and another fun little plant place. Up here, I have three planters hanging on macrame hangers, and these are actually shelf brackets. So I thought that would be like a nice modern spin on the typical little plant hanger. This is a Hoya obovada. I got it in California a couple years ago. It has grown to be so big, as you can see. It fills up this entire window here. At my old house, it actually sat in the shower and it did a lot of growth in there because there was so much humidity and light, but we haven't seen a ton of activity as of recently, since the move. It hasn't really done a ton, but it is still stable and looking really nice. This is also a plant hanger that I made a couple years ago. In this plant hanger, I have a Monstera adansonii. I also made this macrame piece. Just a fun little fringe piece. And there's really nothing special about this plant in particular, but it's just a nice one to have in the window. And then this is a Hoya pubicalyx. It is actually putting out some new growth. You can see right here, this is new. And I believe that this is new as well. Yeah, that feels new. So this is a nice one. I got that at the same time as I got the obovada. It was a lot smaller and thankfully it has grown and this is in a hanger from the bees booth. This is my Raphidophora tetrasperma and I, it used to be a really tall plant but I recently cut it down to be a bunch of pieces. So now it sits in this jar while it roots. It's definitely ready to be potted up. As you can see, we have a lot of root action and it's sitting on this little plant stand from Walmart actually. It needs to have a pot in it, but I just haven't put a pot in it, so I just put this on here. This looks like a new leaf that it's recently put out. There's a few top cuttings in here, but a lot of these I just like segmented out and cut. Um, so that's what it looks like right now. It definitely is ready to be potted up and I think that it'll be really nice um, to have all of this as one big full plant rather than a really tall, skinny, kind of stringy plant. In the wicker throne, I have a philodendron florida, which I recently unboxed from JP Botanicals on Etsy, and I haven't really done anything with it yet. I usually just let plants kind of chill out when they arrive to me, but this one has some really cool coloring on the leaf. I just find it to be a very satisfying plant, so. Very beautiful, I'm excited to have that potted up soon. This little shelf, I'm going to pull it out so that it's easier to look at. This is a, a magic star, something like that. And it's so pretty, these leaves 
are very, very big, like bigger than my hand. The coloring is really nice. Like it almost looks like a galaxy with the variegation. It's really cool. And then it has red undersides. So this is definitely a favorite plant. I have it potted in De La Tanks and it seems to be really enjoying it. I thought that it would need a little bit more moisture retention but it seems to quite enjoy it. And we have a new leaf coming out right here, which is fun. This is a little Fetonia, which died and is growing back. So if you ever do kill your Fetonia and it looks like this, <laughs> it will grow back. So you just have to be really patient and wait a very long time, but it will eventually grow back. This has been growing back for probably like, I don't know, six months or so. And it's not the prettiest plant by any stretch of the imagination, but it is growing back. So I'm kind of keeping it as an experiment. This is a Calathea white star and it is so gorgeous. I am so deeply in love with this plant. I love the white and the green and the pink and the stripes. I mean, it is just so striking. I have not repotted it yet, but check this out. It needs to be repotted because we have some roots sticking out the bottom. I'll probably put it in this pot right here. I would actually prefer to put it in a ceramic pot, not a terracotta. So we'll have to see if I can find that. But anyway, I water it when it gets a little bit curly. Same thing with this one. It'll kind of curl in when it's thirsty. That's when I water it. Um, I try to catch it before it gets to that point actually, but I don't always catch it before that. So yeah, she's just really pretty, really steady and puts out a lot of new growth. This is a Syndapsis pictus, just a regular one. And it's an okay plant. You know, I feel like I have bad luck with this plant. Um, as soon as I unboxed it, like half of it died, which really sucked. But you know, what can you do? Such is life. Hopefully it will regain some of its senses. I mean, it was a much fuller plant before and then something just unfortunate happened to it. I think that I don't know, maybe the soil got too dry too quickly. I'm not exactly sure, but it doesn't have like a lot of variegation like the Exotica does, but it does have like really nice silver lining around all of the leaves. So it's a really pretty one. And these are also super, super soft. This is an African violet that is currently out of bloom. So it's not too exciting, but it does have cute little purple blooms. This is a Monstera Siltipicana, and we've been on a journey together. <laughs> I don't know how long this plant is going to last. I mean, I really wish that it would do something, but it has not done anything in a very long time. It was sitting in the greenhouse cabinet and it wasn't doing anything. So I just removed it from there because I needed the real estate for something else. But this was actually gifted to me by my friend and it got really big and it just randomly like died. I don't know why, but there wasn't a pest or anything like that. It just decided that it wasn't happy anymore. So I don't know if it's gonna ever recover, but. And then this is a modeled Syngonium that I also recently unboxed from JP Botanicals. The leaves on this Syngonium are just incredible. I think it's called a Mojito Syngonium, Syngonium Mojito. And it's very, very beautiful. I hope that it doesn't lose the variegation. It's currently just sitting in water until I can pot it up. This is usually what I do with my Syngonium, so. It will be potted up very soon, but until then, it's very cute just sitting there. Okay, we've made it to the last part of my houseplant tour, which is my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. This houses most of my hard to find, rare or sensitive plants. So let's take a look inside. I wanted to show you first the conditions. It is currently 81% humidity in there. So that's typically what it sits at. And I do have this weatherproofed so that it's completely sealed so that, you know, humidity cannot escape. But I'm gonna open this up and it will drastically drop the humidity during that time. But I have it also weatherproofed up here. Anyway, I've made an entire video showing this whole situation, how I set it up. And like, I think I have one update video up since I posted, you know, putting it together and everything. So definitely go check that out if you're interested in all of this, but I am going to turn off the fans because they're kind of loud. Okay, let's start up on this little shelf. This is a Hoya polynura, which is the fishtail Hoya which you can see that new set of leaves right here up front and center. Definitely looks like a fish tail, like a mermaid tail. So ever since I put it in the cabinet, it put out this leaf and it put out these two, which are much more 
uh, like what the leaves are supposed to look like. Prior to that, it was putting out these types of leaves, which are just long and skinny and not what they were supposed to be. Like I thought that the leaves were supposed to look like this and that is true. <laughs> this is a string of turtles in the middle and I'll pan all the way down so you can see how long it is. It has some good length on it. The turtles are pretty small in general. This is one of those plants that I worked really hard to find and I've just been <laughs> honestly pretty disappointed with it and like confused as to why it's so sought after. I don't know if it's sought after anymore, but yeah, I paid a lot of money for this little cutting that was probably like this big and it did grow obviously, but I just don't think that it was worth like the amount of effort that went into finding it. This is a Hoya retusa, which since having it in the cabinet, it has really taken off and put off this little shoot. And we have some other like baby shoots that are coming in as well. So that one's really cute. It does need to be repotted. I'd love to repot this one and this one, preferably into a little bit bigger of a pot to see if that helps out at all. But oh, also all these like little pieces up here, that's all new since I put it in the cabinet a couple weeks ago. In this jar of spag, I have a little cutting of melanochrysum. Melanochrysum, I have a love-hate relationship with. Like I have a few of them around in this cabinet and I don't know if I love it or hate it, honestly, but this is the newest leaf that it's put out since it's been living in the cabinet, which is absolutely beautiful. Obviously this is like a baby piece. This was a runner offshoot from a bigger plant that I used to have that didn't make it. So it's been living in moss for a really long time and it finally put out this new leaf, I think because it's been super happy with the humidity. And then next to that is a Anthurium doriaki, which is so pretty. It was not living in the cabinet, so it, I don't know, we put out leaves like this that it was like missing a segment. It would be not super happy with me. As you can see, some of the leaves used to look like this, um, but there's like a wider view of the plant. It is a little thirsty right now, so it's kind of bending down, but typically it would lean up more like, I don't know, maybe more like this. The clip does kind of force the plant to be at an angle. So you'll see that with all my plants that are on the clips. So I guess gravity is also kind of pulling it down. But anyway, it does need to be repotted. I'd like to repot it and see how that helps out. But the next plant in here is a Hoya australis. This is just a really nice little variegated Hoya. It hasn't done much since it's been in the cabinet. It's really the only plant that I haven't seen a ton of results with. So I think I'm gonna repot it and see if that you know, boost of nutrients gives it something. We will just have to see with her. I don't really know. This, as you can see, is a very beat up Anthurium regale. Um, we, the, me and this plant have really been through some stuff, you know, and I don't know, it's, it's in the cabinet now. Hopefully it will do something fun and new. You can see there's like a spike down there. Um, so hopefully a new leaf will come out eventually, but I've just been keeping an eye on it and hoping that this leaf doesn't disintegrate too much more until it can at least put out one more leaf. This is an Anthurium Ace of Spades, which this is a new leaf right here. Very cute. And this is another older leaf. So yeah, it's just a, a basic Anthurium. I don't, I don't consider this to be like one of my more remarkable plants as of right now. I think when it gets older, it'll be a little bit cooler, but it's potted up in De La Tanks as are most of the plants in here if they're not in moss. So it seems to be pretty happy. These two down here are actually new. So first of all, this one is an Epipremnum pinnatum, a variegated one. And I recently unboxed this from JP Botanicals and I just kind of stuck it in here. I haven't done anything with it yet. It doesn't have a root system, so I can't repot it. So I, it's just sitting in moss, you know, as it was. I'm gonna wait until a root system occurs and then I'll probably get on repotting it. These are some seeds I got from Jungle Berry on Instagram. I purchased these. They're already starting to germinate, so I need to put these in, you know, individual little cells or maybe just like put them in like a little bunch of sphagnum moss to see what happens. But yeah, they're little seeds. I think that it was a Magnificum something cross. I don't remember. I have to look at my PayPal history, but it is for an Anthurium. This is a Philodendron Glorious, which is a cross between the Melanochrysum and the Gloriosum. It is also new from JP Botanicals. I recently unboxed this in a video and it put out this new leaf. Like two days ago, it finished putting it out, which is so 
cute. It's such a beautiful leaf. I'm obsessed. It's still sitting in moss. I haven't had the chance to check on the roots yet, but I'm assuming that they're gonna be really nice and I'll probably be repotting it depending on the roots. This is an Alocasia Maharani. I'm obsessed with this alocasia. It's so pretty. I just love this like shield leaf look. I just, oh my gosh, I think it's so cool. It's putting out another little leaf spike down here. Um, usually they take a little bit to put out a new leaf, but yeah, I think it's really lovely. This is the oldest leaf, I believe, but yeah. I don't have much to say about it besides it's really pretty and it has like a really cool texture which you could probably already see but let me just like zoom in so you can see it even better it's so cool i have some tiny cuttings back here so i have some variegated elephant ear and then i have like a tiny right here you can see a tiny little melanochrysum and those are both propagating in cocoa peat which is exactly the same thing as this medium right here um, it's an alternative to peat moss, so I really like it. I haven't really done a ton of propagating in it, but I did that, and they seem to be pretty happy, so that's cool. Okay, kind of sprawled out in the middle of everything is this Anthurium forgetii. Let me show you this little leaf. It's not like the most beautiful forgetii, if I do say so myself. <laughs> she is doing her best, I guess. It did recently bloom. This was the bloom stalk. I cut it off recently. Um, but the leaves look like this, except usually not as ugly. I don't know. She was having a really hard time for a long time. And then I kind of got my stuff together with Anthurium and, you know, gave them more of what they need. And I have seen a big turnaround. But still, it, it did take like the brunt of my learning, which I think is okay. You know, your plants are not always gonna look amazing. And I think that my anthurium are a great example of <laughs> the fact that I'm learning, you know? So anyway, behind that, I have an alocasia black velvet, which is very beautiful. It has these really nice deep green leaves. It currently has stuff on it. So I do apologize for the marks. I should have washed it off, but that's what it looks like. It has two leaves right now. And uh, it's not putting out anything new right now, but hopefully soon. This is an Anthurium Doriaki Crystallinum Cross, I believe. It was sold to me as a silver blush. And the leaves are silver and they make me blush. So the name is, it's aptly named, I should say. <laughs> it's so pretty, I love it. It did put off a little baby offshoot, which I've considered separating. But yeah, I put out these two leaves most recently this one is still hardening off you can see that it's probably going to get a lot bigger probably bigger than this leaf right here so i'm excited to see that one keep growing and yeah it's just a really fun plant i imported this it was actually one of my first import orders i should say from green spaces id and i you know i haven't ordered from them recently but i do recommend if you're interested this is an anthurium waroquianum or the queen anthurium and mine has been doing okay <laughs> so this was actually a gift from the plants meow which is another youtuber she is amazing she always puts out really really amazing like hard to find plant content she sells plants too so if you're interested uh, she has a lot of really amazing plants that she sells so this is just an example it is putting out a new leaf kind of so this like spike thing i believe is going to be a new leaf i'm super excited to see what it is it just recently started doing that since i put it in the cabinet so i think that it has been much much happier back there kind of buried is an orchid that is you know waiting to bloom again and i don't really have anything special to say about it so we're just gonna move on this is a philodendron mommy eye or mammy eye and this plant has really put me through it this year. It actually used to be a really, really big, beautiful philodendron, and then it got root rot. I noticed that it had root rot, I guess like a week or two before I moved across the country. So I wasn't able to really tend to it as I wanted to. So it did suffer a lot, but it did live in a closed, like basically it was a wet stick, okay? So it lived in a closed container for probably like four or five months and then it the leaf tip that it used to have because basically when these plants put out a new leaf like this is a new leaf spike but when this is done it will already have a new leaf spike like this for example i'm going to show you this plant later but it just put out this leaf and it already has this new leaf spike coming up right so that's preparing for the next leaf that's what this one does too except when it got root rot you know, obviously it stopped producing leaves. I wasn't sure what was gonna happen. It had no leaves at all. 
So I just kind of held on to it and hoped for the best. And then finally it put out the leaf that it was holding on to, which was this one, <laughs> which obviously looks like tragic. And then it very quickly put out this leaf, which is a little ugly. It's kind of curly. Um, but honestly, like when I first imported it, it did this as well. And then the next leaf that it put out was like incredible. So this leaf looks quite large in comparison to this one. So I'm hoping that it'll be a nice one and I can work on getting it into like an actual potting medium. But for now, like this Coco Peat is pretty awesome and I haven't had any issues with it. So pretty cool. And then this is an Anthurium crystallinum. And it recently put out this big, beautiful leaf. This is an older leaf. Here's just an example. The, all the leaves used to be around this size and then I put it in the container or in this um, cabinet and now this one is this big. So it just goes to show that the leaves just get bigger and better when they are, are in the perfect conditions. So good news on that. And then at the bottom here, I have less plants, but they are bigger. So I just was talking about this Philodendron Melanochrysum varicosum cross. So let me see if I can get some light from the cabinet because it's actually dark outside now. So let's see if I can get some light from the cabinet in here, but you can just see that this leaf is so striking. Like this is definitely not doing it justice. I do apologize for that, but it is a nice long leaf. It has a really cool veining of a varicosum, long leaf of a melanochrysum. It's just really beautiful. And this is, you know, how tall it is. This leaf looks very, very melanochrysum and I kind of got nervous that they would all kind of come out like this again. This was a different one, also very melanochrysum, but you can see the leaves used to be really big. So they were big leaves and then they started to get small. And then now being back like in a cabinet situation, we had a really big one up there. So super exciting on that. I'm gonna move this out of the way so that I can talk with you about this Burley Marks fantasy, which was given to me by Adam. Here's one of the older original leaves that he gave it to me with. And then it put out this one. Then it put out this one. You can see a trend. They're progressively getting smaller. <laughs> and then it put out this, which is like a really thin, weird leaf. And then I put it in the cabinet and it started getting like really good conditions and like what it wanted to experience, like that nice high humidity, lots of bright light. So then it put out this leaf, which is honestly a little wonky, but now we have this, which looks pretty good to me. So it just recently popped out. So the petiole is still kind of crooked, but we will see how that one goes. But we did have some situations where like the growth tip fell off. Like it actually had to restart right here because for some reason it just, fell off. So this is like a new situation right there. Anyway, it's really cute. I do love it. And I'm excited to see, you know, what it's going to do in the future. All right. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because this is a Monstera Standaliana. And I think they're so annoying. They're really hard to propagate. Like this is what they do. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ever going to be successful propagating this plant. Like whatever I do, it just rolls up like a taquito. So yeah, it's currently in moss. I keep the moss, you know, moist, but not wet. And it still just goes all taquito on me. This is a little bin of Hoya obovata splash that I got from Adam. And I've been propagating it in this for quite a while. I could probably actually uh, transfer it into some sort of like cocoa peat as a, I don't know, a medium that would stay wet a little bit longer, but these leaves are just so incredible. And I think it looks really cute, like flat across the pot, <laughs> but I'd probably cut it like maybe right here so that I could lay it and it could be more like circular on the pot. You look at, there's so many dead fungus gnats in here. I need to come in and clean this out, but this cabinet houses a lot of fungus gnats, unfortunately. Okay, this is a variegated Wayetii. I think it's called like a Kentiana or something like that. But yeah, it's also rooting in spag in this little clay pot. This is a Calathea orbifolia or a Gapertia orbifolia, I believe actually. And this is the most recent leaf that it put out, which is beautiful and perfect in every way. And I love it. It had leaves like this and this. Obviously they will be retiring soon, <laughs> but yeah, it's really cute. I love it. This is one of my, like, it used to be one of my number one wish list plants. It was actually, I think maybe the first 
original wishlist plant that I bought because this one, like I found this plant right when I started collecting house plants and I was obsessed with it, but I was like, I'm not ready. I, I cannot do that yet. <laughs> so I waited a long time and then when I finally got it, it was like the best feeling ever. So finally have one. It finally put out a new leaf as well. It didn't put out a new leaf for a very long time. And I was like, um, <laughs> ma'am, are you going to die? But she's okay. And then the last plant in this cabinet and in this tour in general is this Anthurium clarinervium, which has also, you know, taken me for a loop. It's, it's really made me work for it, you know? <laughs> but you can see that these leaves are really big. Um, the plant was actually like an extra large plant that I purchased from a seller in Sweden called Plant That Plant. Oscar is his name. So yeah, I really love this. It actually took a very long time to get like new leaves coming out. And then um, these two leaves came out, like all the original leaves on the plant are gone now so it has put out these two leaves since I've had it and then it put out this weird leaf like I think as a way to just like get back into business of putting out new leaves and then it finally put out this one which is much more comparable to like obviously these leaves and I do actually see something new happening already so yeah pretty exciting on that so hopefully we'll get some like more fullness going on in here um, but this is seriously like such a beautiful plant it's a bit wonky but i love it so pretty and much happier in this cabinet because when it wasn't in the cabinet i really thought i was gonna lose it and then i put it in here and now it's honestly like fully recovered all right you guys thank you very much for watching this houseplant tour that is the end you made it to the end of the video so if you made it to the end of the video Tell me your favorite plant emoji in the comments. Let's do one of those. And um, subscribe if you're not already. I'd love to have you around here more often, especially if you watch to the end. I feel like if you watch to the end, we're probably good friends by now, so you might as well just hit the subscribe button. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.